Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Dyer, and we are talking high school football today, live at the Kenwood Town Center Chick-fil-A. And uh, before we get started, we definitely want to thank Kenwood Town Center Chick-fil-A owner-operator Garth Truder and his family for this entire hospitality. This is the third year of being here and having the WCPO High School Insider Podcast going back to 2019. And so thank you again. Sincere uh, appreciation, Garth, for you and your entire staff here for setting us up. But uh, we are highlighting the Indian Hill, Moeller, and Sycamore High School football teams as we preview the season. Week one, believe it or not, uh, starts on the week of August 15th. The first Thursday night is August 18th, and then with the first Friday night obviously being the 19th. And uh, we're going to be joined by Sycamore head coach Scott Dottillo and a few of his players here momentarily. But uh, please be joined by Indian Hill head coach John Rodenberg and Moeller head coach Mark Elder, and they brought along some of their players as well. And uh, I just want to kind of get started here. This is um, kind of a, a, a get to started uh, conversation starter, you know, a, an icebreaker of sorts. I asked a couple different questions. We were over in Northern Kentucky on Monday, over at Western Hills Chick-fil-A on Tuesday. But um, Coach Rodenberg, Coach Elder, I just kind of want to open up to you before we talk about each of your individual teams. But um, what is it about high school football? that it makes it so special here in greater Cincinnati. From Coach Rundberg, I know this is your 29th year overall. You spent the past four seasons in Indiana, coming back here, 25th year here in greater Cincinnati. But um, what is it about this area around the tri-state that each and every Friday night makes everybody gravitate toward high school football? Well, I think, first of all, the people that live in Cincinnati identify themselves with the high school they went to. And that's not everywhere. You know, I was in Indianapolis. I didn't identify with high school they went to might have identified with college. So right, a, right away when you, people identify the high school they went to, they begin to identify a little pride. You know, and football being that, that first sport of the season, I think people just are, are excited and they take a lot of pride in where they're from. And I think you know, high school football is, is really unique in Cincinnati. I've been, I've been to some other states and other cities, and it, it's you know, certainly it's big, it's exciting. But in Cincinnati, I think just that pride of your community has a little extra – something special to it yeah and to kind of further on that you know being a Cincinnati guy Cincinnati football is fantastic football I mean it's really really good football high level football and something that coach Rodenberg I, I've laughed about because people joke about that all the time with Cincinnati people you say you, you meet somebody someplace and that's one of the first questions you ask is well where, where'd you go to school and when you ask that question you mean what high school did you go to? That is something very unique to Cincinnati. It's not like that any other city I've ever been around. So there is a lot of pride in that. And, and with it being such good football and, and a football city, football state, uh, I think that there's a lot of fan base that comes around it. And with it being so competitive, uh, Cincinnati football is a great place. Obviously, the sport is in the spotlight at all the levels. We could talk so much uh, for hours, and we don't have that time here on this podcast about you know, the NFL and the college game and how it's changed over the years. But um, just from your individual standpoint, I'm kind of curious from each one of you, why do you enjoy coaching at the high school level so much? Coach Rodenberg, I know you've been at this for quite a long time. Well, you know, it's obviously the impact you have on people's lives. You know, that, that's, that's the primary, primary thing that I think you do it. But I, I like the camaraderie. You know, I like coming to practice. I may not always enjoy the heat. I may not always enjoy the, uh, the long hours, but... When you get a chance to sit in a locker room or you get a chance to sit in a coach's office and uh, you get a chance to know people, uh, there's a lot of fun to that. You know, it, it, you just enjoy being around guys. You enjoy putting something together. You enjoy taking 50, 60, 70, 80 guys and seeing if you can, uh, see if you can come up with that one special season. I, I, that's, what, that's what really gives me a lot of joy. Coach Elder, I mean, obviously you've, you've coached at the collegiate level. I'm just kind of curious. I know you've been asked this a million times, the difference sure. between the two, but... What is it about a high school game that really energizes you this time of year? I think it's part of it's the love of the game. I mean, no one's getting paid to do it. Uh, so guys are out there because they want to be a part of it and they, they love it. It's not because someone's uh, giving you a million dollars or, or even the fa fact that they're paying for your college or anything like that. It's, it's the love of the game. And, and you do see a wide variety of skill sets. You see some guys that might be future guys that are playing the NFL and they're playing right next to a guy or, or on the same team with a guy that um, – 
isn't very good, you know, but everybody out there has a love for the game. And, and there's something about that, the spirit of it, that um, is something special to be around and be a part of. And, and then just the age that guys are at. I mean, they're very impressionable age. Um, they're, they're energetic, they're, they're excited, and it's, it's fun to be around guys at that age that, that love the sport that you love and, and want to be a part of something that's, that's bigger than them. Great stuff from both of you coaches, obviously. Uh, I want to remind everybody this High School Insider podcast is presented by our local Chick-fil-A restaurants where the winning play is always chicken. Go for the extra point with a side of their macaroni and cheese today. And um, we're going to talk a little more in depth here about Indian Hill. And Coach Rodenberg brought a couple of his players to my right here, junior cornerback John Potagel and junior offensive lineman, defensive lineman Chase Lantham. And guys, thanks for joining us here. And uh, Coach, I guess I'll just start off with you and um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Indian Hill? I know I was out there earlier this summer. You only have one senior on this squad, but uh, what do you like most about uh, this potential of this team and, and inheriting this program the way you did in late January? Yeah, you know, we're young, uh, but the one thing I do like is how talented we are. And uh, I think it's going to be a real challenge. I think if these guys can buy into, into their talent level and, and they can uh, get experience quick, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to come out the bat with a couple tough teams. And, uh, you know, if they can get some experience, we're going to be fine. And that's really going to be the great challenge is to convince these guys that uh, we're going to have to play through it for some adversity because, you know, we're, obviously it's a new system. It's a new coach. You know, I'm getting to know them. They're getting to know me. But, I, you know, I really believe with the talent level we have, I think, uh, again, if, if they're persistent and, and, they, and they're and they willing to, uh, to adapt, I think we're going to be all right by the end of the season. So it's going to be exciting. John, I'll just start with you here. I mean, what are your impressions of uh... – what Coach Rodenberg has brought to the table. And I know he always has an emphasis on the weight room, and <laughs> that had to have been uh, an early impression this winter for you. Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, he's provided us with uh, great coaching, and uh, the mind he brings to the game really helps us. And like you said, like his, he takes his summers really seriously, and it's unlike anything we've had before. We're well-conditioned. We're in the weight room every morning, and it's been awesome, and we've enjoyed it so far. Chase, what's the expectation that Coach has brought to the program this year? Well, well, I think uh, the expectation is uh, doing your all. You know, um, even if we're not doing the best in the game, we still want to put in an all, put in our all, and just uh, keep going, keep doing what he taught us. Coach, what have you noticed from these two guys? Uh, obviously, you brought here, brought them both here for a reason, and, and they've been doing well for you this preseason. You know, I did. I, you know, one thing, I'm, I'm in the weight room all the time. <clears throat> I'm not running the weight program this year, but I, I'm in the weight room. So, you know, I'm observing, constantly observing. And I think the two things that these, you know, John and Chase both bring to the game and bring to the tables their intensity. Uh, they like doing it. They're having fun doing it, which I think is absolutely key. And then just they have a great intensity to do, to do well. And, and uh, I'm excited with both of them can do. Again, they're both only juniors. Uh, you know, and, and uh, I told them they can't act like juniors. They got to, you know, they got to grow up quick. But uh, I think their intensity will carry them through. Indian Hill was five and five last season. Uh, the Braves open at McNicholas August nineteenth. Ironically enough, that's where Coach Rodenberg started his head coaching career back in nineteen ninety four. Not that he's been reminded about that maybe ten or a thousand times, right? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I guess John and Chase, I just wanted to kind of maybe get a bigger perspective from both of you about Indian Hill football and, and what it means to, to play there at Tomahawk Stadium on Friday night. John, what's it like to, to go out there and play on Fridays? Um, it's just um, showing out for the crowd, I guess. You know, you, you work all the summers and days and nights to try to uh, produce the best talent you can, and we just want uh, to show our community what we're about and that we're some hard-nosed kids and that we can play football. Chase, obviously your brother Grant played there at Indian Hill, 2020 grad, now is at the University of Virginia. And um, I, I'm just curious what, what you kind of noticed from him as you were growing up and, and, and you know, what you've become accustomed to now that uh, you're a varsity player. Well, um, during the 2020 lockdown, uh, we couldn't go to a local gym or anything. So we had to make what we were given with. So me and him every day would go in our basement and lift for like three hours or four hours a day. And that just showed me, like, what it takes to play high school football at a varsity level. And he really inspired me to become, like, who I am today. Coach, tell us a little bit about your uh, scrimmage schedule as, as you kind of prepare for that 
Season so, opener. So Saturday we scrimmage uh, Little Miami, Valley, Valley View, and um, Fenwick. Uh, I think three schools that are in, in that type of realm that we're in, I think it'll be a great test. Uh, see where we're at. You know, I, I try to convince these guys when you're scrimmaging, the scoreboard's not on. There's different things I'm looking for. Uh, you know, I'm looking for intensity. I'm looking for guys that want to be physical. And, and, you know, I always try to tell these guys I can fix any mental mistake. I said, I can't fix physical mistakes. I said, they're very difficult to fix. And then we'll finish up with Purcell the week after and get ready for our opener against McNick. And, and again, like you said, I've been reminded a ton of times I've been at McNick, but my God, that's over 20 years ago. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to going there, but I'm, I'm looking forward to taking these guys over. And uh, they didn't have a stadium when I was there the first time. So uh, it'll be fun to take them over there and, and uh, open up the season. I'm just kind of curious, guys. What, what's Coach Rodenberg like to play for, John? I'm just just curious what the, the vibe has been like, I guess. was He's an offensive guy. What, what has he brought uh, to you, especially? Uh, he's helped out a lot with offense and defense. Um, he's brought his mind of 20-plus years to us kids that have only been playing for a quarter of our lives. And um, he's intense, and he, he gets what he wants, and we do it for him. And he gets the point where um, he gets his points across to us that we need to be intense and physical and – the sense of urgency is key, and we get a lot of things done. And, Chase, you talked about lifting there during the 2020 lockdown. I mean, I'm kind of curious how coaches challenged you at the weight room this, uh, this winter and even through this summer. Oh, yeah. Um, he doesn't really like warm-up sets very much, so we just get in there and start lifting right away. Before that, we would, like, do two or three sets of just nothing. Now he's pushing us way more than I thought he could, so... That's just another level that I didn't think I could reach. How does he bring out the best in you with that mindset? Um, he just keeps pushing us. Uh, his motto is mindset is everything. So he wants us to keep pushing ourselves. And even if it starts burning or starts hurting, he, keeps, he wants us to keep going. Great. And uh, we're going to keep with the uh, Coach Runberg theme. How about that for this trivia question? It's a little trivia time here for John and Chase. Uh, multiple choice here, so I'm not going to put you on the spot. But... Uh, Obviously, um, something centered around your, uh, your new head coach there at Indian Hill. What position did Coach John Rodenberg play in high school and college? And hopefully you can't see my answers as I show my script here. So, again, what position did Coach Rodenberg play in high school and in college? Is it uh, A, quarterback, B, defensive back, or C, linebacker? I mean, I have, uh, he's a smaller guy, so I got to go with corner. But no, he. <laughs> well, you, you got to no. get a, you got to get a unified answer here, uh, so you guys he, discuss among yourselves. I it's defense, definitely. It's definitely defense. Um, I it's got to be it's got to be linebacker. <laughs> you kidding me? That, that's true. He's, he is coaching the linebackers, so yeah, I'm going. We'll go, we'll go with linebacker. linebacker. Is that your final answer? C linebacker. You are correct. There yep, go. Coach Rodenberg. 1982 LaSalle grab played later played at Capital University and he played linebacker gift cards for John and Chase Good job guys Thank you. Coach what do you think? Well, you know, we're they excited. know about you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they got it right. I, I, I don't realize that I wasn't not always that small, you know, so uh, I might have to have a talk with them on the way home <laughs> That's why well, I want to thank uh, Indian Hill head coach John Rodenberg also Bring along a couple of his juniors here, quarterback John Potogil and junior offensive lineman, defensive lineman Chase Lantham. All the best to Indian Hill this season. Uh, appreciate you joining us here in the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. Appreciate you having us, Mike. Thanks. Thank Thanks, guys. And we're going to uh, bring up Moeller High School, a couple of their players here. Coach Elder is already here, obviously. But, again, thank you to Coach Rodenberg for bringing his players. And great perspective here as, as Coach begins his 29th year as a high school head coach and now we're going to bring in a couple of molar players here senior linebacker joe Janetti and senior wide receiver tonell bryant and coach thanks for uh bringing these guys along and uh i guess just i'll just start with you here um obviously 11 and 2 a year ago and i know you're probably tired of talking about last year and being a state semifinalist, but um what do you like most about the crusaders this year what are some of your early impressions as you get going here in the month of August? Well, we've got a, a number of veteran guys. We've got the senior class is a really strong class. It's a class that there's a bunch of guys that uh, like the two that are up here that have been playing varsity football for a while. And, um, and then even then, there's other guys that are 
very, very good football players that maybe this is going to be their, their first year playing a ton. But we've got a really, really strong senior class um, and strong in a lot of different ways. I think we've got a lot of depth of talent. Uh, and then there's also been a strong commitment from these guys. I walked in the door uh, December or January of their freshman year and you know going on three years now this has been a really committed class I mean they've, they've been in the weight room they've been um, a- as committed as any class that, that we've had and and usually what you see I think is is the commitment level raises as it goes and uh, that's where this class has been a little bit different they right from the get-go right from their freshman year uh, this has been a group that if they're not in other sports they've been there they've been lifting they've been committed they've been working hard um, and then I think it's a talented group so a lot of ex- high expectations for these guys um, and you alluded to, to last year uh, I hope that the message is, has been understood and I think that it is that last year's last year and, and whatever was accomplished then uh, it really has no bearing upon what, what's done this year and, and I think that this is a group that uh, is proud of what we did a year ago but, but hungry uh, to, to do more, to, to accomplish more and, and so forth and, and understand that it's got to be a, a one day at a time, one step at a time process. And Muller opens the season August 19th up at Maslin, so making the drive up to Stark County. And uh, I know this is a brutal schedule for you, Coach. Um, actually, I was talking to Elder Coach Doug Ramsey yesterday a little bit. I said, so, you know, talking about his schedule, he says, well, St. X and Muller, I mean, their schedule is just at another level. So um, how much do you, do you take pride in um, being battle-tested here uh, as you not only go through uh, I, I know, a team like Maslin, but – you know, you play the GCL South schedule. I mean, I know you're so accustomed to that by now, but um, how much does that really go into preparing for the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, it's like the SEC West. I mean, every every week is a, is a battle. So, but I, I really think that that's that's a positive thing. It really is because. Uh, it, it may not lead to your best regular season record. I mean, if you put 10 cupcakes up there that we can just go and, and, and beat up on them, we can be 10-0 and 0 and whatever um, if we're good enough to do that. But, but the great thing about our schedule is, is that we get into the, the habit of we got to play really, really well on Friday night. And regardless of how that game goes, we got to get ready for another game that we're going to have to play an A game to be able to win. And, and that prepares you for that process of when you get into the playoffs and, and it gets to the second, the third round, whatever it might be, where, hey, we got to play really, really well, and we might have had a, an emotional win, and, and it's exciting. Well, guess what? We're used to having to strap it up and be ready for another Monday practice because the guys know we got to have another great performance to, to have a chance to win again. Uh, we're not just getting that for the first time in week 13 or week 14. We're, we're used to that. That's, that's week in and week out for us, and so it's, it's nothing new. I mean, you look at last year, whether we won or lost, I mean, you go overtime game, overtime game, overtime game, and a game that comes down to the last couple of plays in the fourth quarter, that's our last four weeks of the season. Well, when we get to the playoffs, we're ready. We, we're, we're used to having to strap it back up and ready to roll. Joe, I'm just kind of curious. I mean, Coach just alluded to those um, consecutive overtime games. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, what, St. Ed's, St. Ignatius, Elder, was it, too? St. Ed's. St. Ed's, okay. Um, I mean, what did, what did that teach you guys, I guess, down the home stretch of the regular season? How did that prepare you for the playoffs? Uh, I definitely think that mentally it shows us how when we're in a, an emotional position, we got to be able to bounce back after a loss. And as we did, we were able to, we lost the Elder, and then we were able to come back the next week, beat Iggy, and then go up to Lakewood and, and beat St. Ed's in both very grueling games and three straight weeks of very tough, tough games that we were able to turn it around and pull out with some wins. What was that like for you, Tanel, just to, to experience that and know that, you know, these games, obviously only a regular season, but still, it's, it's got to give you a great experience for the stretch run. Yes, sir. It was very tough. I mean, we faced a lot of adversity in all the games, and it, like, boosted our confidence as we won, went up to Lakewood, St. Ed's, and won in overtime, and it just boosted our confidence for the season pretty much. So. Tell us a little bit about both of these guys, Coach, and, and what you've noticed from them. Um, this preseason, obviously, the stats speak for themselves. Their talent. Anybody who watched your team last year knows what each of these guys did on both sides of the ball. But I'm kind of curious uh, your perspective on Tanel and Joe. 
Yeah, we've got two guys that are, that are really into football. You know, they, they both love football and uh, both multi-sport athletes and, and compete in other things and, and do both of the, both of the guys are, are very good at their other sports, lacrosse and track. Um, but they're football guys that love football. And, and it shows in, um, I mean, everybody loves football on Friday night, right? I mean, that's easy, but it, it shows in their commitment. I mean, these guys um, show up every day with a workman's mentality. They're, they're team guys. They're, they're uh, play in and play out high effort guys and and high character guys as far as football is concerned and on and off the field so um think the world of both of these guys and and they're a lot like many of our other seniors were that those are the key ingredients to to success guys that um i mean who doesn't love it on friday night when the light comes on but but do you love practice on monday and tuesday and, and even if you don't if you're able to fake it and, and try hard and, and do what you got to do to prepare yourself that's the same thing in my book. So both of these guys are those type of guys that, that um, they, they seem to not just love Friday night, but the, the process of getting better and the, the commitment to get better because they want to be the, the best that they can be. Joe, do you feel like this is a college program already with the way that, I mean, what coach brings to the table, obviously, and just that mentality, like he said, you know, you can't just be ready for game day. Yes, sir, I'd agree. Um, definitely Coach Elder brings a great amount of intensity and competition and knows when to let the guys rest. I think that the way that he runs our team and runs our program is top, top notch, and I, I couldn't ask for a better coach for my high school career and to finish out my years at Moeller. And obviously you made a commitment to the Air Force Academy last month, and uh, first of all, congratulations to you, Thank you. on that commitment. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your future plans. I know you're, you're primarily focused on this season, obviously, but uh, what would you like to do in the future? Uh, well, I'm, I'm super excited for the opportunity to go to the Air Force Academy. Um, as most people know, you have to serve for five years after, after college. So I'll probably look into being a pilot as my service and uh, just see where that opportunity takes me from there. What do you think about the linebacker core this season? Uh, I think that we have a great amount of depth. And, I mean, I'd say that we have probably three guys at each position that can get in there, mix it up, and do the job. And be able to win games with all three of those guys at each position. Teammate of yours, Matthew Selega, committed to the Naval Academy as well, right? Yes, Tell sir. us about, about him in his season. Uh, Matthew, Come. he's he's a great competitor, works works his butt off. I mean, you won't find another guy out, out there that's going to work as hard as him. And he is committed 100% to the team, to helping his teammates, and he's going to hold people accountable. And that's why he deserves and has earned his position and uh, his opportunity at the Naval Academy. So now, what does it feel like to set a school record of 71 receptions a year ago? Uh, it's, a, it's a huge honor to be in the Moeller um, school records. You know, like, it's, yeah, it's a huge honor. How exciting, um, how, how much are you looking forward to this offense this year? And how different will it be, obviously, a new quarterback this year? Uh, I think the offense will still be explosive because, I mean, we, unfortunately we lost two senior receivers, Jared Merck and Kurt Thompson, but we're also bringing in two other receivers that, that are rising seniors, Ryan Meckley and Josiah Love. Um, I'm pretty sure they will, they're going to, they're going to, yeah, they're going to um, do great this season. And yes, sir. If you're almost your entire O-line back too, coach, is that right? Uh, we've got five guys that have starting experience, which is uh, a little different than it was a year ago. Last year, we had one combined start going into the season. I thought that the group did a great job. The coaching staff did a great job of getting those guys prepared. We're a little bit more veteran this year, which is great, uh, with five guys that have started games and a uh, number of guys that, that are going to have opportunities to play in college. So um, that's always a real positive point because – you know, at the end of the day, the, the game is won in the line of scrimmage more often than not, especially the higher the level you play. So the longer you're playing in the season, the more that that, that veteran crew will be, be a benefit for us. I know you don't want to, don't want to uh, individualize every one of your players because I know you could take a long time for that. But you have a special running back, obviously, in 2024, standout Jordan Marshall. Can you talk about um, his progress, his preseason this year? Yeah, Jordan's a fantastic kid and a really talented running back and uh, had a great year for us. And, um, you know, we, we have Alec Weeders also a running back, and we split time with those guys, and, and both of those guys, uh, they bring a lot of similarities to, to what we do because 
both guys are, are great runners, uh, run strong. I mean, Weeder's not the tallest guy in the world, but, but he's, he's very powerful. And, and both those guys are strong runners. They're really athletic. And they're also threats out of the backfield. So uh, what's great about both of those guys is their ability to, to be involved in the run game, to be involved in the pass game, both in protection and, and getting out on routes. And we can u- utilize those guys. But Jordan's a special talent. I mean, he, he's kind of got all of the – the attributes that that colleges are looking for, which is why his offer list is where it is. Guys, how intense can practice be? I mean, you got so much talent on both sides of the ball. I know we could be talking a, a lot of a lot of time here about uh, individual players, and it's not what it's about. It's about the team. But to know, I'm just kind of curious. I mean, you have a cornerback and Carson um, Carson Hobbs is going to South Carolina. Just committed recently, 2024 corner. Um, what, what's that like? I guess going against the defense. Uh, yes, sir. Me and Carson, you know, we we get bang heads all the time. I, it's my goal to push him as hard as I can, get him to the next level. He pushes me the best as he can, and even all the other guys on the field. It's just always a competition out there. It's always like somebody's trying to be better than somebody else. It's always like who wants to be, who wants to win, who wants to be the best out there. So, how hungry is this team, Joe? Uh, I'd say that after this past season, the success that we had. I think everyone knows the potential that we do have, but we all realize that we just got to keep our heads on straight, can't get cocky. A lot of guys committing, a lot of potential, a lot of talent, but as, as long as we keep our heads on straight and or hit, hit the road hard, we'll, we'll be very successful this season. Great, and hopefully you didn't see my trivia question. If you did, just pretend like you didn't see the answer, okay? <laughs> trivia time here for Moeller. Uh, I'd like to know what jersey number did Bengals defensive end Sam Hubbard wear his junior and senior seasons at Moeller? Can I answer it? Do you know it without a multiple choice? Yeah, number six. You got it correct. Good job. Cheater. He looked over your shoulder and looked at the answer. <laughs> well, I said just, just fake it for me if you could, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's the Donnie's Menor group. So. Good stuff. Um, obviously, Sam Hubbard, a proud graduate of Moeller High School, and uh, well, we want to thank Muller head coach Mark Elder, also senior wide receiver Tanel Bryant, and senior linebacker Joe Gennetti for all their time and perspective. Best of luck to Muller this season. Thanks for joining us here on the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Tanel. That is the Muller Crusaders. <laughs> Division I state semifinalists from a year ago. Now we're going to welcome up Sycamore High School. And head coach Scott Totillo, who brought along some of his aviators here at the Kenwood Town Center Chick-fil-A. And I want to remind everybody, this High School Insider podcast presented by our local Chick-fil-A restaurants, where the winning play is always chicken. Download the app today for easy ordering. And uh, we're going to get some of the aviators here. How are you doing, Mike Dyer, WCPO? Dom? Coach Dottillo making his way up here. Coach, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Good to see you as always. Good to see you, Mike. Thank you. You uh, have joined us here for each and every one of these uh, Kenwood Town Center Chick-fil-A's here going back to 2019. So really appreciate um, you bring in a couple of your players. First of all, you want to just introduce a few of your players here. Is, uh, we yep. definitely want to highlight your team. Yep. To my left is uh, Jackson Nyblack. Jackson plays, uh, does a little bit of everything. Plays some defensive back, line, outside linebacker in certain situations and a little bit of receiver. Uh, to my far, to the far end is Johnny Morrow, plays outside linebacker. And right next to you is Dom Mangano, who, uh, who plays offensive line as our center. Uh, all three of them are senior captains. And um, obviously this is your 17th season, is that correct? If I can count that high, yeah. I think, I think that's accurate, gotcha. 17. Um, well, tell us a little bit about the Sycamore Aviators this preseason, what you like about the team, and um, obviously you got a new stadium coming on campus too. I want you to talk about that as well. Okay, I'll uh, start with the team. Uh, everything's been great so far. Um, you know, with, with, with one minor exception sitting out in the crowd, but, but uh, no, everything's been good. I really like, this t- like our team. Um, we're very committed, very hardworking. Uh, we're very young, but I, but I think our, these seniors have embraced that. And uh, you know, showing a lot of leadership to the younger players on our team, and and uh, and, and I'm excited. We, we're getting better every practice. We talked about that a lot. You know, let let's not worry about 
things in the future. Let's worry about the moment in the present and get better each practice and, and climb that ladder to, to week one and then climb the ladder, a few more steps to week two, uh, so forth and so on. And obviously you were practicing here before you were, kindly came here to the uh, Kenwood Town Center Chick-fil-A, but um, we kind of had a coach's discussion to open the show, and I just wanted to pose this to you. I know we probably had many conversations over the years, but what is it about high school football that still energizes you, Scott, after 17 or entering your 17th year, that is? Uh, to be honest, I, I, the competitiveness for me personally. I'm a competitive person. I enjoy that. I love the challenge of, of trying to, to produce winners and work with kids and, and watch them mature and grow and develop. Um, you know, I know that sounds kind of cliche, but, but I do enjoy that part of my job. And, and you get that as a teacher, but not to the same level as you do when you're out there in the grind with with athletes and players, you get to know them differently, you get to know their families and kind of what their makeup is. And so, so I, I've, I've always enjoyed, enjoyed that. And, and to be honest, the, the players energize me. I love being out on the field. Uh, there's a lot of things about the job I don't like, like everybody's jobs, sure. but when I'm engaged in my job on the field, it's, it's the best and, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Tell us a little bit about the uh, new addition to the campus. Uh, first of all, how you're practicing this summer and maybe how you'll transition into that new stadium eventually. Yeah, we're, uh, practices are still the same. We're, we're on the same practice field. We've had some logistical issues with traffic flow and patterns and where we're meeting and watching film and, you know, what restrooms are working and what restrooms aren't and whether we were having water or not. So, you know, we got a major renovation at the school itself. We got the new stadium going up. We got new parking lot design going on. So it's, it's, um, it's active. It's an active campus. Let's just say that. Uh, but we're excited about the stadium. Um, you know, it's, it's been a, a two and a half to three year process from planning and implementation and design to, to start seeing it go up, you know, on campus is great. Uh, they still tell me it's scheduled to be on time for our week two game, which is our home opener. Um, we'll see how that goes. Obviously, weather's a key part of it and just all the other challenges of accomplishing things in today's day and age. So uh, we'll see how this final month goes, but home stands are up, student stands are up, press box is sitting in the parking lot ready to go up, turf's supposed to start Monday. So I think we'll see a lot of change here in the next couple of days. Be honest, is your athletic director, Mark Harden, is he okay right now or is he's, he a little bit He's rattled? in stable condition. <laughs> okay. He's in stable condition. <laughs> Mark's a good guy. Obviously talked to him last yeah. week and hoping to get that completed for week two, as you mentioned, against Oak Hills yep. in the GMC opener. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the Aviators. Uh, six and six record last year. Um, you know, I, I know you want to talk about this year's group and everything, but certainly you had a special player last year in William Engel, GMC Offensive Player of the Year. Um, you know, t tell us a little bit about maybe the Aviators on offense and, and how that dynamic will change this year. Yeah, so last year we had a unique player. Um, you know, we had a, a, a player with, with you know, a 200 pound kid. Uh, he's currently at the Naval Academy, so we had that kind of character makeup that would fit an academy well great leader great discipline hard runner um, and had a natural instinct with the ball in his hand uh, to make things happen and and the the gelling of a big offensive line senior laden with that you know was was a, a great way to a great foundation for our team and we were really good on offense last year ran the ball very well transitioning to this year will be a little bit different uh, we're not quite 300 pounds, 285 pounds across the front. Uh, we don't necessarily have that dynamic ball carrier at quarterback. We do have some very good guys that can that can tote the ball, um, you know. But we'll we'll transition like we have when we had Greg Simpson to the next quarterback, and when we had Kyle Sess to the next quarterback, when we had Mitch Allen to the next quarterback, when we had Jake Borman to the next quarterback. All these quarterbacks that were marquee players and had their own unique skill sets, we'll just have to morph it to what we have. You know, what we had in size last year up front, we have in speed and athleticism this year up front. So we have to maximize and utilize that, you know. And, um, you know, I think we'll be putting the ball in the air more, being a little more diversified, 
and what our what our plan is, um, because we because that's our team this year, and and we'll try to try to make that work, and in time we'll get there. How much do you relish that as a coach? Obviously, each year brings a challenge, a new journey, but you know, I mean, when do you start planning? For, I assume you started planning for that as soon as last year was over. But I mean, in terms of scheme, I mean, when does that actually start? for you as the coach, as a head coach and your coaching staff as well? Oh, when the season ended, <laughs> you know. I mean, honestly, when, when the season ended, you, you do your banquet, you give out your awards, and then, you, then you're, like, immediately thinking about how are we going to make this work, go to some clinics to learn some new, new things from other coaches, talk to other people, you know, how they're running this set, why they're doing this, you know, so forth and so on. It's not that we've not done it in the past, it's just – it's a pretty de- decent transition from what we were able to do last year. Can you talk about some of your guys here, uh, Coach, if you don't mind. Maybe start with Jackson there to your left. Yeah, Jackson's, a, like I said, very versatile player. Uh, he's blessed with good speed, ran track on the track team last uh, last spring. He's got real good hands. And, um, you know, what I like is, is, is him, his character. He's a high-character guy. If I told him to go, hey, guess what, you're going to play nose guard next week, he'd shake his head and go, Okay, I'll see what I can do. And if I asked him to play quarterback, he'd do it. And and uh, and he's very versatile and smart that way. So uh, where his final location will be will be determined in time. Uh, but it won't be based on his talents because his talents are there and very versatile. It'll probably be where we need to piece him in to, to, to that situation. And injuries can dictate that. Game plans can dictate that, so it's really important to have versatile players uh, on your team like like Jackson. Um, on the far end, Johnny, very athletic, had a tremendous offseason. Um, you know, played a little bit of varsity last year and then had an injury to kind of kind of put things in, in slow mo toward the end. But but um, you know, just looking at him, you can tell he spent a lot of time in the weight room. Super committed kid, and, and I think uh, we made some changes on defense too, and found a position that he can really excel at individually. And I think it'll help our our team immensely, uh, getting more playmaking uh, from him because of the because of the slight change in, in what we're doing. Uh, and Dom's just a workhorse, you know. Dom's definitely undersized for an offensive lineman. He knows that, um, but you know, surrounded by all those big guys last year was Dom. And, and Dom was blocking the stuff out of people last year uh, as a junior, and and uh, and we'll need to do that again. And collectively, all three of them, and Nate Malone, who's the uh, the other captain who couldn't make it today, um, you know, I, like I mentioned earlier about the leadership piece and the character piece, these guys bring a lot of it, and um, and I'm real excited for that. I'm real excited for the underclassmen to see it as well. Jackson, how much are you looking forward to the new stadium? I mean, have you envisioned how that's going to be playing on that a field? A lot, a lot. I'm very excited for our like our student section as well. Like we get to run out in front of the student section. I think that'll be very good for like good for our team, good for our students. It'll be really fun. Johnny, what about you? I'm I'm curious what, how much you're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm seeing the construction. It looks it looks real well. I've kind of missed the old stadium, but ready for this one, yeah. And Dom. Um, I mean, what was it like? Obviously, for years and years, you would you would drive to the the old junior high school and and, and play at the stadium there. But um, is there going to be a different dynamic? I guess, I guess you haven't experienced it yet. But how much are you looking to that as being true home field advantage? I guess. Well, I'm excited. Well, yeah, it's going to be different. But I'm a, we're going to put our own stamp on it. It's going to be our own. We're the first senior class to do it. It's going to be our own thing, and we're going to make it unique. We're going to make it ours, and that's the thing I'm probably most excited about for that for sure. What do you like most about this year's team, Dom? Uh, we're hungry. We have a lot to prove. Uh, every, we have a lot of doubters. So we're going to go out there and we're going to prove them wrong completely. Johnny, do you feel like this team has a chip on its shoulder? I mean, especially, Coach mentioned you had some injuries toward the end of the year. How much are you looking maybe for that, that redemption personally and for the team? Personally, you know, we were ranked 18th in the, in the city. So obviously we're underdogs like last year. But... You know, this defense, especially this defense, we're going to come out with a chip on our shoulder. We're tense, fast, physical. Be the best one of the best uh, defense in the GMC. How do you think you've improved just from a year ago? I'm a lot faster than I was running a 4 6. And especially coming off the edge, that's going to be really dangerous. Yep. Jackson, obviously, everybody knows about the GMC. People are already talking about 
you know, maybe preseason number one for Lakota West and some other teams that, that are in your conference. But um, how much do you relish that opportunity to, you know, to showcase your, your, your talents and, and, you know, as, as Johnny just alluded to, maybe have that chip on your shoulder as well? A lot. I think that it. I think it helps us a lot as a team. I think it's a good thing that'll that'll push us a lot. It's like a constant remembering. I mean, it was the same thing last year. We were. Everyone thought we weren't going to come out as good because the year prior we didn't play that well. And now that we don't have Will Engel anymore, and we got a, a lot of a lot of a lot of shoes to fill and a lot of things to do, I think that it's gonna gonna help us help us stay ready. What have you learned the most from Coach Tatillo? Would you say? Uh, over this year, he's really helped me become more of a leader myself and also how to broaden my, get out of my comfort zone on the field and do different things. And he's showed me a lot, he's made me a better player. I guess I'd pose the same question to you guys, Dom. I mean, what has coach taught you? And um, I guess what's his mindset as he's kind of emphasizing to the team as you guys get ready for the season? Well, we just got to keep pushing forward, you know, uh, setbacks and things are going to happen and we just got to keep grinding at it. You know, we just got to keep grinding. We got to keep going and good things are going to happen eventually if you keep doing it the right way. And that's a big thing he's been preaching. Johnny, what does Sycamore football mean to you? It means finding a way, finding a way to do some, be great. That's it. Simple as that. Simple yep. as that. Great. Coach, you have any final thoughts on this group? Uh, just uh, you're opening the season against Kings, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So we have a uh, you know we have a very challenging schedule. We open up with Kings, who was um, you know they they were like us last year. They were young and and good and talented. And uh, you know they had a great year. So they return a lot of a lot of players. So we got a challenging start. And then this is the first time we were playing all nine GMC schools. So without question, this is probably the toughest schedule we've played because of that. Um, you know, but we're, we're up to the task. You know, I, I you know, I've, I've done this long enough to know that the what the preseason chatter is isn't necessarily how it plays out. Leave come, it to us media folks to, to come, mess it up, right? Yeah, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm saying all the talk, whether it's media or kids or parents or fans or students in school. I mean, there's always talk, and um, you know, we'll see at the end what what the talk is all about. By the way, were you in favor of the nine-game conference schedule? I was just kind of curious your perspective. I, 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 to answer the question directly, no. I, I, I enjoyed playing other teams from other leagues, going to other stadiums, having them come to our places. Um, but at the same time, the flip side is we are going to get a true champion. We're not going to have a, a team that didn't play somebody so far, everybody's going to play everybody, so I understand that aspect of it. But personally, I liked playing other teams and and uh, and and being able to to work the schedule to create some different experiences. And you know, I think for the first year, nobody will know the difference. Five, six years down the road, everybody's playing the same teams every single year, week in, week out. I, I don't know. Might, do you, do you might like get the, a little monotonous. Do you like the 16 playoff qualifiers per region? I mean, do you see that? changing eventually too maybe i would like less personally uh especially in division one i understand it for the other divisions where 16 teams go out of let's say 30 per region when 16s go 16 teams go out of 17 teams or 18 teams i think it really devalues the the regular season a little bit um you know i i, I liked eight i think 12 would be the best you know because then if you have an injury year and you're a good team or you have some things go wrong or you happen to be the team that played a tough schedule um, or like us a young team that might be pretty darn good come week 9 10 11 um, you know you're not you're not missing out because of the Harbin system great perspective as always uh, all right now it's time for some trivia here for Sycamore hopefully nobody saw my question and answer like they did maybe previously I won't mention any names all right coach um, this player is uh, obviously Near and dear to your heart, too, in your coaching career at Sycamore. But uh, the question is, and if I can read it without giving away the answer, hopefully. Of course. <laughs> Maybe Jackson saw it, too. Uh, Arizona Cardinals offensive lineman Justin Murray is starting his fifth season in the NFL. What team drafted the Sycamore High School graduate after his UC playing career concluded in 2016? He was I know. a free agent, actually. Wasn't drafted with the oh. Den 
Well, See, I stand on, corrected on my go. question. All right. So yep. Coach is correcting me. Yeah. So right, there you go. Right. He was, uh, he I'm was sorry. signed you know, as a I, free agent. I did have that down here in my notes. Undrafted rookie free agent in 2016. There you go. Okay. Well, there you go. who I'm signed done. him? I'm sorry. I stand corrected. With Instead the Broncos. Of a, Cleveland Browns, B, Denver Broncos, or C, the New York Giants? It is B. You are correct. You know. How'd you know that, Johnny? He is actually one of my friends I know. He grew up next to me. Uh, my father, fun fact, on this, when he was at the Super Bowl, 216, he tasted my dad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real. Small world there. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Well, great. Well, Chick-fil-A, uh, cards for everybody here. Yeah. Great job. Hey. Thanks for answering that, Johnny. Well, thank you very much, guys, for uh, participating in that and also offering some perspective on the, the Aviators this season. Best of luck to Sycamore yep. and uh, also an extra – um, you know, best of luck as, as far as the stadium opening, too. So it's going to be a great thing for everybody in the school community. Thanks for joining us here on the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate Thank you, everything coach. you do all the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Jackson. Best of luck to you guys. And that will conclude our WCPO High School Insider Podcast. Again, want to thank Chick-fil-A, uh, Kenwood Town Center owner-operator Garth Truder for the hospitality. And uh, always pleased to uh, talk high school football here at Kenwood Town Center. We're going to join you from the Fairfield location on Thursday to talk Fairfield and Winton Woods. But that's all we have for you today. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching.